I mean, it's like, pow, like this. And then you go right up there. Action! Yeah. Each fight can be maybe two or three setups with different angles, different cameras. And uh, it means a lot of hard work. And these films are hard work, but they're fun. In other films, the, the focus is frequently uh, placed on the relationship of uh, uh, some of the lead characters to each other. In a martial arts film, the focus is on the fights. The fights are everything. That's what people go to see. That's what people pay to, the money to buy tickets for. That's what we want to concentrate, the action, the adventure, the dynamics of the fight. And it's very, very important that the fights are believable and accurate and exciting. Action! <laughs> Looking good today, Mama. After reading the script and breaking down the fights, <clears throat> that's only phase one. Phase two will take place when I'm actually on location. If I'm not able to go on location scouting, what I'll do then is a few days or even a week before we actually go to that particular location, I'll go and bring a stunt team and we'll work out the particulars, we'll conceptualize and begin to get ideas. Uh, after that, I'll go back and we'll all sit down, I'll get all the stunt guys together and we'll work on the routines with the principals and that's how the whole process uh, goes. can't do anything without choreographing it in a movie purely because of the reshoots, the, the angles. I mean, a cameraman has to set up his camera for a specific angle for certain hits. So he needs to see a rehearsal and know exactly what hits are going to be where and when, which means you can't ad lib because then it may be a miss as far as the camera's concerned. So even though you might feel great throwing a couple of extra things in, it won't work for camera, and that's what the whole thing is geared for, obviously. So what we end up on screen is something that looks realistic with hits that look real. You put that together with a reaction and the sound effect, and you've got, you know, the desired result. Uh, the, the stunt part is uh, oftentimes the most fun part of it all, really. It, uh, it adds an athletic into it. It's, uh, it, it helps create the excitement. I mean, there are people who even refuse to do stunts, and I think you lose part of the character when you do that, because uh, the general excitement, the energy of the character uh, is established a lot of the times through the direct physical action, and uh, I wouldn't do it without it. It's, it's really almost necessary. And yeah, you do get hurt sometimes. You get a little bump on the head, you get cut. Sometimes you get slammed into a wall, you know. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just part of the deal. You have to, uh, control your techniques. Stop just short. Uh, but you still put all the speed and power into it that you would if you were gonna hit them. You just stop short. I mean, you, I take different, uh, movements from different styles, whatever seems to fit. Sometimes what your scene calls for, sometimes you want more realistic, so you would just go with your basic kicks, beats, and punches, and blocks. Uh, for example, when I've done some of my Chinese films, I would have to do splits on walls and aerials and things like that, which are taken from the fancier styles of Kung Fu. So it depends on what the movie is and what the scene calls for. And you can, just from studying so many different styles, I can adapt, you know, to whatever it's called for. Right here. Block, punch, come up. Well, see, I'm afraid I'm so close, I'm going to hit him so close. So, you want to do it? Okay. All right, then. Roger. Great. Like okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And? 
Okay. Here we go. Okay, settle down. Rehearsal. And quiet, please. And action. Use all available weapons. Kill She knows what she's doing. And again, she has a power. Oftentimes you don't. In fact, I can't think of a woman. We've had gals in films of this kind. Uh, and it's never been believable. But she makes it. She makes it work. Cynthia has a Chinese-based background. Her, her style and her form is unique to the Chinese style, which I understood very clearly. I found her to be very limbo, very quick. Uh, Cynthia's flexibility and her grace and movement is the best out of all three. Cynthia's flexibility is unparalleled. You know, she can, the kick she does, by the way, over her head, magnificent, you know, you, you don't see that. The project came to me because I had heard uh, from um, Golden Harvest that uh, they had a young karate girl or karate fighter in um, Hong Kong who uh, seemed to be pretty terrific and they'd like to do some films with her. And they sent me a picture called Above the Law, which I saw, and decided that it would be a great idea if we made a picture of her and we started working on it. In this particular case, they had an actress and a martial artist. And they came to me and said, can we do something? Same thing we did with Jackie Chan, or Bruce Lee. I mean, was, that was a little different because I knew Bruce beforehand. And what happened was we began to think about what kind of a mode to put her in and what kind of a of a picture to put her in. We thought that we ought to get away from the, the drugs and the harsh city kind of action and, and uh, move more into the small town um, uh, situations. And we had just read an article about a purely corrupt town in Tennessee, which had been in the paper, and it sort of led us to the idea. Time is right where a female uh, can come out and be a successful action star as, as well as a man. Time is certainly right for that. We think that China O'Brien is going to be a very successful commercial picture, and we think that uh, the character will continue. We have plans and, and are developing plans now with Cynthia to do a sequel, and uh, if the character is strong enough, we will go on and make as many as the public will allow us. Uh, 
I would say, uh, unless it's like a bazooka or something new like that, uh, the, the weapons pretty much stay about the same. Uh, most of them, like if we get into automatic weapons, we deal with uh, standard NATO weapons, which would be like M16s uh, or uh, Israeli Uzis, uh, AK-47s. Now, for an automatic weapon, what we had to do was something like this. You have to take the barrel and put a plug in it so that when the uh, we use blanks, we don't have anything you know, coming out the end that are going to hurt any of the actors. But you still want to have the fire and the smoke and everything else, and that's why you have the bird cage like this. And when we put in the blanks, put in about oh, 30 rounds per clip. And when they get ready to shoot, it's ready to go. This is what we use for, you know, for the sheriffs and the deputies. Either these are just rubber guns. You can't can't even tell by this point. Everything else is pretty detailed. You know, so if they have to ever hit them over the head, you know, or anything like that, it's just plastic gun. Uh, yeah. The blade is just a uh, cardboard. It's uh, it's just some. Uh, we actually cut it out of a cardboard license plate. What he'll do is we'll take the knife like this, and the director will say action, and he will then go, you know, and then what happens is that, so this knife doesn't, when it's kicked out of the hand, doesn't fly and hurt someone. We replace it with this knife here, and it then is kicked out of his hand and flies. Well, my name is Paul Godwin. I'm going to be taking this motorcycle through the back of the bar back there, through a window, pop a little willy, and then make it look good. Today we have a motorcycle going through a window, and uh, it's breakaway in a sense that it's tempered glass, and we put uh, a charge, an explosive charge on the glass, and as the motorcycle reaches the window, just about the time it gets to the window, we'll set the charges off, it shatters the glass, and it's tempered so that the glass just breaks into small, tiny pieces, and then the motorcycle goes through it, and it gives the... It looks like he hits the glass, shatters it, and goes through it, but actually the glass is already broken when it gets there. Yeah, each camera is going to be a different speed. That's going to be about 32, this will be about 48, and this one will be about maybe 100, 98 or something like that. So it'll be coming through in slow motion. It'll be pretty interesting. Well, today we have, uh, uh, we're crashing a motorcycle through a window. Uh, Dakota comes in, he starts a fight, and uh, taking him to this bar window. That's, you know, about all we're doing today. Okay. We're rolling. Easy. 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 And action. Action. Nobody, back. Come back. Right here, no smoking. No, nobody, no smoking. Nobody come in. Okay, we got it. Thank you. Yeah. You, of course, did. Um, End of the Dragon, which 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 really um, opened up uh, the whole world to uh, that particular genre of action picture, and yeah. presented to them Bruce Lee. Uh, did you see any special qualities in Bruce Lee? Well, oh, he had several, and uh, and he a, a great many attributes. Really, is uh, he was a pretty fair actor. But he, uh, you know, he had a, a presence that was uh, startling at times. And uh, but then again, he almost always was uh, on, so to speak. He was always uh, sort of electrified. And when he got on the screen, he just uh, he just uh, increased that that much. And uh, and his action and and his reflexes and all were you know, phenomenal. And. Uh, so he, uh, yeah, he took over the world. And uh, as a matter of fact, at that moment, just before he died, 
uh, he was truthfully the number one star in the world. And uh, the offers were coming in million, million and a half, and nobody was getting that at that moment 15, 15, 16 years ago. And uh, so it, uh, he, uh, he, his personality and so on uh, overwhelmed, let's say, any, any lack of acting ability. And uh, he, uh, he had an enormous ego, and he was volatile. And that's what I think. In fact, is on um, Enter the Dragon, I think the only uh, two people he really got along with were Linda and myself. And um, he was in constant fights with producers. And uh, so uh, he felt betrayed a number of times and things that happened in the film, but he was very easily uh, aggravated. The press, a comment in the paper and so on. So these, these, that was all of his personality, and it was always on the edge of some sort of volatile. When he would show anger, uh, you believed, you believed it, <laughs> and uh, uh, possibly it wasn't entirely acting. <laughs> I don't know, but it was right there at the surface all the time. He actually found film fights uh, disagreeable because you know somebody gets hit ten times. Well, the third time they would probably be out and it always bothered him, but he knew that uh, for entertainment, that sort of thing, he had to continue and, and to sort of overkill in many cases. And, uh, and uh, he was in conflict there with himself, what he felt was real and what was the uh, film. By the way, uh, it is possible, up until his recent accident, that uh, Keith would uh, could do something of that sort because his action has been beautiful, and uh, and he's very quick and he's he's uh, acrobatic sort of. Now what the hell is this? Get up! Get him! Get up! Get up. Get Uh, one of the things that I like about the character of Dakota is he's a loner. And uh, a lot of you know my training, especially over the last uh, several years, has been uh, so I call it solo training, where you train by yourself and you have to push yourself and sort of coach yourself. Although it's not, you know, I, I like to, you know, over the past, you know, the most recent years, probably about 80% uh, of my training has been solo training, and about 20% I work out with a group, maybe. And uh, I've found it uh, I've fairly easy to, uh, not e I wouldn't say easy, I, I just say uh, I can relate to Dakota, you know, and what he's doing, you know. Uh, I think towards the end of the film, the first film, he starts to start starts to work more as a group but he, what he does in the beginning is try to help out any way he can but not really get involved you know he tries to help out without really getting involved and uh, I just think it's interesting the way he goes about it you know kind of sneaking around and helping wherever he can once we got the outline we sent the outline to Golden Harvest they approved it then we hired writers and at the same time that we were hiring writers and getting a script together. We were starting to look at new martial artists and other people we wanted in it. That's how we got Keith Cook involved. We looked at a lot of, uh, of people who might play the part of Dakota and uh, finally settled on Keith because of his record in the martial arts field and also because we thought he had a great chance to become a film martial artist. They're very different. Uh, uh, a film martial artist and possibly a, a martial artist who uh, goes out on the road all the time. Though so he does both. Keith is somewhat more eclectic. His stresses power, speed, flexibility, and he has gymnastic ability that um, the others don't have. Uh, it is possible, up until his recent accident, that uh, Keith would uh, could do something of that sort because his action has been beautiful. 
and uh, and he's very quick and he's he's uh, acrobatic sort of, but it's a power powerful sort of thing, and uh, uh, we feel that he may well, based on these films, do something you know on his own as a star, uh, and his acting is pretty good and uh, he and he's good looking. Uh, so I think I think the girls may well take to Keith. You know? <laughs> There's gonna be people shooting at me now and then, and I'll, I just. Let out the 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 Let If they get somebody who can handle action, they have to generally compromise a little bit on the acting and vice versa. <clears throat> so working on voice and acting lessons and trying to make both sides adequate so we don't have a compromise in either area, and that seems to be working well so far. And so far I've done 19 movies now, various parts, a couple of those in Hong Kong with Jackie Chan, and uh, it's been fun. We're having a ball with it and everything's going exactly the right direction, just the way I want it to, and uh, no end in sight, hopefully. I'm not exactly certain on the particular style that he studied, but it's evidently more hands. You don't see Richard doing a lot of kicks. You just don't. Uh, on this particular feature, he's been able to learn a lot of the throws and locks and holes from Sensi Obata, so this is something new for him, too. Yeah, well, Richard I'd worked with before, uh, and therefore I knew how good he was, and I knew he was ready to handle a much softer and, and uh, much more dramatic part. And he had all the martial arts skills for years, but I felt that he was really becoming a very good actor, and he has shown it. You made up your mind? No. A lot of the old times are behind you if you decide to make a run for it. He's, uh, he can be amusing, and he's, he's a very good actor, quite good. Um, again, here's a guy who, you know, time is kind of getting by when we had hoped several times to start, and it's never worked out, and uh, to his disappointment, ours too. And, uh, but, and as a fighter, he's Western style, he's bigger, uh, the, the fights are not as crisp, but they're more powerful, that's right. And uh, definitely knows what he's doing. Uh, almost anything, any kind of scene, really. As far as the movie is concerned, Matt, I guess, is the love interest. He's part of a team. Um, the movie, as you already know, you know, involves a girl coming back to a small town that she was raised in. The father gets killed, she ends up running for sheriff. Matt. I guess was a love interest when we were both in high school and uh, she goes away for six years, China leaves for six years and comes back and runs into Matt again. In the meantime Matt has been away, done some work in special forces and uh, now is a teacher at a high school, teaches gym stuff, basic PE as well as a bit of history and so on and so on. And uh, due to this original sort of interest they had in each other they end up being a team, as it were, sort of, and uh, help along with uh, the Dakota character to rid the town of its bad element. So Matt, as I say, is, is a love interest, though it's a very subtle interest as far as that's concerned. And uh, he's just one of a team of three that are integral to the plot. Hey, 
and that's probably number one. It's a lot more dramatic seeing this big monster moving in from the, beneath it and the house going down. So that's basically it. first martial arts film I've ever worked on um, and I mean in some ways it doesn't differ it's just that there's sort of new information uh, how they perform what they perform what they need to perform you know the different equipment um, camera placement how they work it out who they work it out with who's capable of doing what those are all new things for me I've never done that before so that's an area that I'm learning how to shoot karate uh, because karate, again, it's a movie, it's not real. And even though these people are come from uh, real championship status, they have to sell it. They, don't, they can't just do it the way they would normally perform it. fighting situation or a tournament it's uh, you know in most cases you don't have time to think uh, so you're at you actually at your best when you're not thinking about how you're gonna react you just react and that's why your your skills have to be so in tune you know and I think I think uh, in some ways the same thing applies to a choreographed fight or a, or a form the more you practice that routine uh, and the higher level you get it to, the less thinking that you have to do as you're doing things. And so, it sort of becomes almost spontaneous, even though it is choreographed. Uh, that's why I like to, I like to uh, uh, get everybody that I'm working with in a, in a choreographed fight scene comfortable with it, you know, and we'll keep working on it until everybody's comfortable so that they don't have to think about exactly where they're stepping or what angle they're swinging on or something like that which will which will ruin sort of like the uh, sort of the spontaneity of it because they'll they won't they won't be able to fully uh, commit to anything that they're doing uh, any particular punch or attack that they're doing they can't fully commit if they're not totally sure of themselves before they're doing it you just have to be very aware of what's going on and of course when you're doing action movies and when you're doing your own stunts or most of your own stunts like I do there's always a risk of injury um, you know you, ju you just try you know to, to do your best and you know it, you have to have uh, a good uh, sense of accuracy when you're kicking someone because you have to kick maybe you're kicking them to the head you have to come close so it looks like it's hitting with enough power but not hit once in a while someone does get hit or you know accidents do happen which I think when you're in this business you can't avoid it it's something that you just have to accept oh I got smashed in the nose <laughs> got crunched in the head uh, I've been kicked in the groin hit in the groin uh, let's see what else sand in the eyes what you hope for is that you're professional enough to know what you're doing with your punches with your kicks with your timing and that the person you're with 
and training with or sparring with or, or whatever is also professional, knows his timing, knows his limitations as well. And uh, again, it's choreography. It's making sure that both people know exactly what's going to happen, getting the sequence down, rehearsing it well enough so you can just go for it with full power, knowing that the person is going to react the way you want them to and vice versa. I think that's the main thing. And, and of course, having a healthy respect and concern for the other person, realizing that it is a movie after all, and uh, it's not reality. People can say what they like about trying to make things look real. You try and make them look real, but it's not reality. Uh, you can't go belting each other in a movie set because you're going to work again tomorrow, you know, and if your eye's black or you've got to have stitches or something, then that doesn't help anybody. I think the main thing is just to be aware and of yourself and of your partner. So I think rehearsal choreography, the main thing is to ensure people don't get hurt. A good stunt coordinator, it's his job to be just like the sensei in a class. He oversees it. He looks out for things that may go wrong, pulls you up, and maybe makes a, a change to the fight if he sees that's necessary to avoid any injuries, you know, coming up. That's great. It's, it's up to you to position yourself for that hit. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You've got to be a little bit in yourself. A little bit. Position yourself and then give a verbal cue. Edgar, okay. Edgar, you don't want to be here. We began in Los Angeles. We interviewed Sensei Obata and Roy, the Aikido specialists. And then I made a suggestion to uh, Fred Weintraub to get two of the guys from Hong Kong, Garen Monkey, who specialize in the Chinese style of fighting. So that was the first step. Uh, then coming to location, I have to hire the stunt guys. I have to test their reactions, see if they can take a hit and then train them specifically for film. A lot of them have martial arts background, which doesn't help at all when you, when you come to uh, shooting something for film. So they have to be specifically trained. Uh, beyond that point, I have to choreograph the fight. That is, choose a particular stuntman to execute a particular stunt, uh, work with the principals, Keith, Richard, and Cynthia, and um, then the director, Bob Klaus, and just put all of the action together. So it's basically a job of fight coordinating and fight choreography. capsules or dust capsules if you want to spark you load a uh, little capsule with uh, bird bird gravel yeah. zirconium and then when it hits the gravel causes friction and causes the zirconium to kind of explode not really explode but it bursts the capsule and the zirconium burns it looks like sparks ricocheting off concrete or steel and the dust you use for uh, like hits in the ground somebody's running and they want to have uh, simulated shots like behind or in front of the person it just explodes and you have dust coming out the marbles are for stuff like uh, breaking glass or breaking uh, shooting into watermelons and usually when i interview effects men i count their fingers if they have them all there i hire them uh, if they don't well i question it but i don't usually have to ask how many arms does my effects man have This guy was with, with one arm is as good as any one person with three arms. You know, an action picture, people think an action picture is some quickie picture. Not true. Godfather was truthfully an action picture. Uh, actually, some of the roughest action. And Godfather 2, even worse. Uh, great pictures, especially the first one. Um, carefully done in that case. Some are rushed and so on. Uh, but I can't see 
other than just a kind of solid story that is acceptable and believable, uh, the action itself uh, is inventive or fresh as you can make it. And, uh, but a form like just, I don't know, if there were one, I think everybody would be right there doing that particular kind of action picture. Here's the idea. In Hong Kong, they can go and get the pieces and take forever. We can't. Because that means turning around and all that. I understand. Okay. I've learned a lot from the director. Uh, most of my films before were with the Chinese director, and basically we couldn't communicate too well because they didn't speak English, so it would kind of, I'd have to sense what they wanted or look at them and try to copy them or hear. It's actually, you know, one of the times where I can actually communicate and tell me what to do, and I've learned an awful lot from Bob, and I could tell that my acting has improved, you know, working in this uh, atmosphere. Well, right from the beginning, Bob was going to be the director when we first talked about it. Uh, uh, right from the inception when we talked about getting Cynthia out of Hong Kong, we talked about Bob being the director since he had done all the martial arts films I had been involved with. And we worked together quite a bit and knew each other very well. We'd done eight or nine films together. And uh, uh, the martial arts films, he knows how to do and he knows how to set them up. And if I give him what he needs, he usually gets it. If I don't, he doesn't. that work and uh, so bye okay thanks take it easy sleep yeah okay.